أشهدوا أن محمد رسول الله أشهدوا أن محمد رسول الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون We will believe fear Allah as he should be feared and they not except on the state of Islam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful be so upon us the gift to die on the state of Islam Allahumma ameena ya rabbil alameen أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى give us an image of the most profound and devout servant of Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon whom upon uh, them uh, that Allah سبحانه وتعالى bestow his favor on them in the salat every day we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to guide us to the right path the right of those أنعم الله عليهم أنعم عليهم those that Allah سبحانه وتعالى bestow upon his favor in surah Maryam describing this great people 
قال الله سبحانه وتعالى the prophet uh, among them he named Nuh and the offspring of Adam and the offspring of those who have been carried with Nuh alayhi salam the offspring of uh, Ibrahim and of Yaqub alayhi salam ajma'een then قال ومن من هدينا وجتبينا and from among those or those who have guided and those who have chosen إذا تتلى عليهم آيات الرحمن when the verses and the Quran of the ayat of the most merciful is recited to them خروا سجدا وبكيا they fall into prostration and weeping so this image that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing for us is the image of those who منعم عليه Allah bestow upon him his favor then when we read in Surah Al-Fatiha, inquiring, imploring, beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the guidance of those who Allah an'ama alayhim. Therefore, the whole image that portray the ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the stance of sujood in weeping. And the stance of sujood reflect the love of Allah, the connection of Allah, the glorification of Allah, the veneration of Allah, the rejoicing, the istifshah, the happiness, the tranquility, and the power in the heart. Therefore, this is image who reflect for us a heart that is fully, completely submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this image, when you read it in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned of people of the book who believed in the Prophet sallallahu and they've been awaiting for the message because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that a messenger is going to come after Isa alayhi salam. قَالَ إِذَا تُتْلَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَنِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَبُكِيَ They fall upon their faces in prostration and weeping. And it increases them in humility. As a believer in this blessed month, are we from those who an'am Allah alayhim? Because we ask him, inquiring, imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we want to be from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon them his favor. But are we in the guidance of these great people? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَن يُطِعَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنَّعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Those who ever who obey Allah and His Messenger, He will be in the companionship of those who Allah bestow upon them His favor. مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصَّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ From the Prophet, the truthful, and the shuhada. A shuhada al the shaheed, he already died. No, there is a lot of shuhada still walking. They're still walking. As the Prophet sallallahu said, should I show you a shaheed walking on earth? They said, yes. And he pointed to Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Talha al-Fayyad, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He's one of the mabwashirin abil jannah. He's been given the glad tidings of paradise. Oh, how many today in our reality that you see them martyrs and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory and help and support and take the distress out of the people of our people of Gaza these people you see them shuhada they are walking on earth therefore when we talk about an'am Allah alayhim as a believer we need really to be you know dedicated serious by thinking about it contemplating and we say how can be among those an'am Allah alayhim it's not about someone is conflicting the guidance of the Mun'am Ali, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon them his favor, but we are not aware or maybe distracted, maybe distracted, because being in this blessed month, our main objective, our great objective is to finish with month that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have forgiven us. To finish with month, this month, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already had subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted us to be freed from the hellfire. So to ask for such a great thing, tremendous thing, things that beyond imagination to comprehend this greatness, we need to be dedicated and serious. Therefore, when you look at the stance of someone making sujood, weeping, Sayyida Aisha, the most amazing thing she said that she saw from the Prophet Sallallahu in his prayer of Qiyamul Layl and subhanAllah his tears had wet his beard and wet also soaked the place upon which the place that he's making sujood, the ground. So the weeping is a nature in the heart that has sujood to Allah, a heart 
that is fully, fully submitted to Allah. When Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he had made sujood in this ayah from Surah Maryam, قَالَ يَا رب, he was like imploring, Ya Allah, this is the sujood, but where is the bukah? There is no weeping, there is no tears, Ya Allah. He asking Allah, since Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he didn't stop, you know, have weeping into the sake of Allah in his devotion and his worship to Allah to the point that he has two lines on his cheeks from the, from the tears. Therefore, a believer, a true believer, dedicated believer will ask, how can I be from this great people? How can I come to incarnate all our dedication, devotion and worship to Allah in one sujood that reflect my truthfulness? And it is two points, dear brother, respected sister, to be from those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon them his favor, al-mun'amin alayhim, or al-mun'am alayhim, is to have two steps, because someone cannot be at a high level on his own. It is Allah's tawfiq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you, Allah make it easy for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endear the faith into your heart. Allah make you to love the salah. Allah make you to love, to pay, to share, to give zakat, to donate, to do such a thing. And then you become like you're dry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change all your, your heart that it has filled, you know, people they have envy, hatred, grudge, things, and it turned into ikhlas, it turned into dedication, it turned into devotion. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor upon you. However, it is, you know, you will not gain it on your own. Allah will give it to you. So how these great people, they get to that level? It started with the point. And the point is al mabdau is the principle, is the beginning. The beginning need to be from you. And this beginning need to be a submission, a truthful submission. A surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a true surrendering to Allah. And when I say true surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that you consider and learn all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attribute to know how you're going to surrender to Allah. And it does not lead like profound knowledge. No, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am a razzaq, I am the provider. The fact to doubt about the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are conflicting and having doubt about the name, the whole sustaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-qayyum. Qa'imun ala kulli nafsin. He's the one, subhanAllah, who's holding and taking care and managing and controlling. Who? Every soul. So this is one of the aspects of the surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a truthful surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when we say al-istislamu sadiq is to surrender fully, completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the mabda. When you start like that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you, will guide you, will increase you in faith. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was talking about the people, the young people of the cave, the young adult from the cave, what he said, They were like young youth who believed in Allah. That's the mabda, that's the beginning, that's the surrendering. And we increase them in guidance. And strengthen their heart. So the complete surrendering to Allah, the truthful surrendering to Allah is going to induce such a power into your heart to help you be a full submitted heart. And those who being guided and came to the guidance, increased them in guidance. And he showed them the way of the piety, how to, to do their righteousness, how to be active dynamically into, the, into their life. So they increase their faith, maintain it, sustain it, and increase their piety. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in many ayat, And the other Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same also in Surah Maryam, this one in Surah Muhammad and in Surah Al-Kahf about the, the young men. And many of the ayat which denote, in Allah if you give support and help to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you and increase you in blessing. And this is, comes to the second point, is the action of piety. Because the iman that you have in your heart, it is the iman as a belief. How to implement this iman? How to put in action this iman? The putting in action of the iman, of the faith in your heart, is the taqwa. Is the taqwa. So the taqwa is the dynamic action of the iman, is the implementation of the iman. When you say, I believe in Allah, and I believe that Allah, whatever He told me, is just, and whatever He commanded me, I submit to it. Then when you come into your life 
anything that conflict with the order of Allah, you're going to shield yourself from it, you're going to prevent yourself from falling in it, and you're going to be uh, driven toward what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fulfill what Allah had, had commanded you to do. And this is the taqwa. However, the taqwa, if you pray, part of the taqwa. You read of the Quran, part of the taqwa. You pay your zakat, part of the taqwa. But is what is the most core, like the core element in the taqwa to help you always being driven. The more core, well, the core element in the action of the taqwa is a nasrullah. Nasrullah. It's like you become from ansarullah. You help in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You support in the sake of Allah. That is the drive of the action of the taqwa. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you support Allah, if you support the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will help you. Allah will increase you in blessing. Allah will be with you. And when we say support and help in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not like you're going to check and find any battlefield that you're going to fight for it. It's not that. Nasrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with your inner self. With your inner self. That's the true Nasr. So when you make the governance of the self under the keys of the or commands of Allah, that's the Nasr of Allah. That's the Nasr of Allah that you are performing and observing within your own self. And that's it the required. Because if you do control yourself and you will have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala governing the self, then everything else will be on its path. It will be on its path. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he the great example of the complete submission, truthful, complete submission. And if you reflect, you know, into his event or in his subhanAllah trial that he met, remember Ibrahim alayhi salam with his complete submission, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him power in his heart. So he became, he does not fear anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the power. That is the power. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when you read in the Quran that he destroyed all their idols, we just take it as granted. It's not granted. It's something tremendous that Ibrahim. So imagine in a society, the most sacred thing that they have, it really incarnate their honor, their creed, their belief, their tradition, everything. The father of Ibrahim was a kind and nice to his, to his son, but he was aligned with his people because what Ibrahim did in their sight is something unbearable. It's the biggest blasphemy ever. So Ibrahim, what he did, he did it with the strength in his heart, with the heart that he submitted truly to Allah, because he knows Allah is the only one deity worthy of worship. And he will dedicate himself and his life, all of it, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power that he has in his heart is that power of the submission that we're talking about, that we need to check in our heart, do we have it? And Ibrahim, in face of the fire, you know all the story. He was not scared at all. Because he only fears Allah. The next step after the fire being thrown in the air, it is in the hand of Allah. The fire is the servant of Allah. The air is the servant of Allah. Ibrahim is the servant of Allah. And he is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one at the time. And then subhanAllah, Allah saved him. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam, the complete and truthful submission. And here you see, that strength that Allah put in his heart, it becomes like the taqwa. What all he's doing is Nasrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's subhanAllah facing his nation, you know, with the false belief to help them, guide them, conduct them, or convey for them the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They deny. Then you see the complete submission of Ibrahim with truthfulness when it came to his own son, the first child he ever got when he was very old. And yet Ibrahim, he had the strength in the heart. And that's it, the Nasr. You're going to defeat your own inner self. That lust, that wickedness, you're going to defeat it. Why? Because for the sake of Allah, that's when you become a true believer. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them true believers in the beginning of Surah Al-Anfal. And the key of the true believer, and when you hear the name of Allah, your heart to tremble. Those people, when they hear the name of Allah, they heart to tremble. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The heart trembled. Today, you listen to the name of Allah, you can hear the whole Quran and the heart will not tremble. 
Why? Because we didn't take the time to connect with Allah, to know who is Allah. Because the true surrendering, when you say, La ilaha illallah, what is La ilaha illallah? You're going to tell me there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Of course. But Allah, who is Allah, Allah is the provider. Then there is no provider except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who gives you victory and triumph and help you. There, there is no helper. Only, only Allah. There is no all-knowing, only Allah. This is subhanAllah, when you put this element, then you're going to cleanse your heart because you're going to connect to every attribute, to every name who's going to strengthen you and with which you're going to be increasing the power into your heart of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that knowing of Allah is going to aid you in glorification and veneration. Then when you hear the name of Allah, your heart will tremble. Because you'd be longing to meet him, to connect with him, to be remembering him. Because he's the one who's going to provide you that sweetness and tranquility. And when you go into tears, into your sujood, those tears, subhanAllah, comes to wipe all those, subhanAllah, those, those, those worries, those sadness. That's, subhanAllah, how someone will find that true happiness and tranquility only exists when you are in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other pleasures, subhanAllah, as a fleeting pleasure, as a pleasure people, as soon as they get to the, its peak, it falls down and everyone will feel like, subhanAllah, you know, worrying, depressed, and subhanAllah, in a state of like, uh, of void. And this is the pleasure of the dunya. This is the pleasure of the dunya. You eat too much, you're pleasuring, and then, subhanAllah, food comes. People, they do, they will let their substance and then they will be going to the hospital or they cannot even have days even, even to think or to ponder or even to talk. Why? Because the pleasure of the dunya, what comes after it, is that depression, is that dunk, is that anguish, subhanAllah, and, and destroy one's soul. And Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when he came to his son, it becomes something personal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling him, this is a trial because you are good. Because you are from the good doers. Because I want to elevate you higher. And that is the true belief. That is what makes the heart tremble when you hear the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask yourself, how far are you from the trembling of the heart when you hear the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can we not attain it in Ramadan? Maybe not. But why not you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it? Omar asked for the tears, Allah gave him the tears. Ask Allah for the khushu, Allah will give you khushu. But how sincere will you be in asking that? The second example is the example of the companion of when Allah ta'ala alayhim in Ghazwat al ahzab specifically in the battle of the ditch, Ghazwat al ahzab They had been, subhanAllah, severely, violently shaken from inside. They had, subhanAllah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in the Quran, Zaghat al absar the eyes shifted in fear and the heart jumped to the throat out of fear. Out of fear, out subhanAllah, is the nature of the human being. Qala wa zulzilu, zulzilu, they widely shaken. The the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al Yaman give us an image of this subhanAllah, this very tremendous shaking that they have within themselves. And nobody can imagine it. Nobody can imagine it. It's very cold. It's subhanAllah, the army came from all over. They are subhanAllah under, you know, the, let's say under siege. And subhanAllah, if they're going to be, they're going to be killed and their family and their children, as you see it today in our people in Gaza. And that shaking, it was the cause of the increasing of Iman. How? How? The severely shaking that they had in the, within themselves, it didn't stop them to believe in Allah. It didn't stop them to connect with Allah. It didn't help them to doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises. That's the most, because that's the nature of a human being. You can be scared, you can fear. That's our nature. Uh, you don't like the, the, some people, they don't like the dark, they feel claustrophobic. Other people, they cannot even get, you know, in high position, they feel like, you know, uh, fainting. It's our nature, we are weak. Allah created weak. But the heart can be stronger than the whole universe. Why? When it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their heart was so strong. But when they came to that point, when they came to that point, as the point, subhanAllah, where the heart is shaken, is shaken, that's it. They knew 
this is the beginning of the Nasr. This is the beginning of the help of Allah. Because at that position, they did everything in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They read in the Quran, have not the example of the people before you came to you, to the point that being touched by distress, by subhanAllah, anguish, by poverty. And they zulzilu, qala Allah subhanahu and then zulzilu, they violently being shaken. Till the messenger and the believer, they say, when the help of Allah is coming. This ayah, by analogy, they say that this, what happening them, this weakness, this shaking within themselves, it is the beginning of the Nasr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it is his Quran. Because they never doubted the promise of Allah. Never, never. When the believer, they say the confederate army, the alliance. This is what Allah and His Messenger promised us. What promised us? Nasr. How did you know? Because you are very shaken, violently shaken. And this is how we need to look at the situation of our people in Gaza today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help. That's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ And Allah and His Messenger only they said the truth. And it increased them in iman and submission. You see? Al-Islam al-Sadaq The true surrendering Increase them in Iman Someone in distress Someone in deep fear Someone deeply shaken It increased their Iman Why? Because in their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is So and this action itself In this action This is the action of the taqwa That you have defeated your weakness To say stop Allah said Stop Allah will never break his promise Stop because if someone is going to die, he's going to be welcomed and honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this Nasr of the Nafs, you can look at Yusuf alayhi salam. That subhanAllah, after the surrendering, Yusuf alayhi salam, he has one word that he faced with it. Everything that is going to conflict with his submission to Allah. He is fulfilling of the obedience of Allah. Ma'ad Allah. Stop. Ma'ad Allah. I seek refuge with Allah. A refuge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the condition of Yusuf to be seduced in that condition and to say ma'ad Allah to see the power of the heart of the Yusuf. This is the dynamic action of the Iman which is the amal of the taqwa. The amal of the taqwa driven by helping, supporting the cause of Allah. It's something maybe you think it's your own desire. You say this is, no, no, this is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That desire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there is a way how can you spend it or subhanAllah invest it, you invest it in halal. This one is haram. This one is haram. So you're going to help the cause of Allah. You're going to fight in the sake of Allah. I said no to the adultery. No to the zina. No to the gambling. No to the haram. No to the cheating. No to the gossiping. That is how you make nasr of yourself. Nasr of Allah by defeating the weak itself. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And he was saying ma'ad Allah. You can read again Surah Yusuf. And the way how Yaqub his father. He was defeating himself, deceiving the sad nerve, and making Nasr, helping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his cause. So he will be the most submitted. He knew that his son Yusuf is going to be a prophet. So it's impossible that he died. It's impossible. Because he told him his dream. He's a prophet, you know. And his subhanAllah power was sabrun jameel, beautiful. I will endure patiently. That is tawakkul. Then when it comes to the side of the nafs as if weak people, I said, you know, I complain my sorrow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's our side as a weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold you accountable on our weakness. If you stay the whole day, the, you know, crying without saying anything that conflict with, the, with Allah's decree, and subhanAllah, that's normal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, The eyes shed tears and the heart is in sorrow, but we only say what pleases Allah when he lost his son Ibrahim. Then, ikhwani, when we know this and you attain this position by surrendering to Allah and by making Nasr you support the cause of Allah first within yourself the way how we shared and explained this is when you're going to attain the point when you hear the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tremble your heart you feel warmth you feel subhanAllah supported you feel like subhanAllah something close to you you feel sudden cheerfulness that give you tranquility, that give you sweet taste in your tongue and sweet taste in your heart. That's the trembling of the heart. 
You only get it when you come to do this point, when you are dedicated, not your heart distracted. Then, at this moment, Allah will take care of you. Allah will take care of your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your affairs. That's what it means, tawakkul. Musa alayhi salam, he was facing a whole empire. Whole empire. Don't think like Musa was facing the sorcerer. He was facing all sorcerer brought by, you know, an emperor. And this emperor has all his soldiers. So Musa and his brother Harun facing a whole empire. So when Musa alayhi salam saw their sticks, how they turned, subhanAllah, shifting and moving like snakes, he got scared inside. And this is, look, Allah said, when you have a qalbun sajid, when you have a submitted heart, Allah will come to your help and guide. قال, لا تخف, do not fear. You are the highest. أنك أنت الأعلى. So look that confidence. In this position, when you have a submitted heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will blow into your heart that security and safety and assurance. إنك, you are the highest. وألقي ما فيه. Just throw what you have in your right hand. Do you think that Musa knew what is going to happen? He didn't know. Just throw the stick. He knew that Allah showed him that he turned into a snake. But he's going to do. And then how his stick turned into a snake, devouring everything. Himself was mesmerized, alayhi salam. But that the confidence that Allah put in the heart of a believer who already submitted to him. And he was given nasr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyub alayhi salam in his subhanallah profound situation how he was you know qala masani shaytan shaytan has touched me with with adab with the torture you know with subhanallah and the nasab and he caused me this distress how because the shaytan came to him and told him you are you are prophet and think why god is doing this for you so he was subhanallah having to as ahl tafsir this is what they said you know to cause him to think a wrong of Allah to have assumption about Allah and that subhanallah for Ayyub is something that if he will embrace it then he's going to break his patience and break his firmness then he implored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then when you come to Allah to ask refuge with him like Yusuf like Yaqub like subhanallah the case of Musa alayhi salam here Ayyub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in simple way. He'll give you the solution in the most simple way. Just hit with your feet the ground. It's going to gush water with which you wash and everything will be fine. And we'll give him the blessing. Why the blessing? Because he was fully, truthfully submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when you do such a thing, you're going to look at one aspect is when you are on the path, your goal is to give Nasr to Allah, to help and support in the cause of Allah, starting with yourself. This is how you're going to become from Alladheena an'am Allahu alayhim. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah liya wa lakum fa astaghfiru wa al-ghafur rahim. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد The truthful submission followed by the dynamic action of the implementation of the faith with the taqwa guided and its core is to help in the cause of Allah starting by yourself and that will be translated into obeying Allah fulfilling his order in which is your honor in which is the blessing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make you a blessed servant as he said Isa qala wa ja'alani mubarakan he made me to be a blessed all the believers are blessed if you are into the category of alladheena an'am allahu alayhi therefore into the nasr there is a specific aspect there is a specific aspect how can we know how can we know that we are on this path how can we know how can we know? Because when you do such a thing, when you do the Nasr of Allah, when you try to support the cause of Allah, you try, then your heart is going to go to a certain direction. Who is directing your heart? Is Allah. Therefore, when Allah directs your heart, now after Ramadan, you're going to see, don't look at the quantity, don't look how much Quran you're going to read. The Quran. That's, that's impossible. That's a nature in us. You're not going to be reading as much Quran 
you know, uh, in, uh, after Ramadan, like in Ramadan, and someone, he's, mashallah, rahimahullah ta'ala bidhalik, and he's, he's, he's nature. But we're talking about the majority of the people. But hence, we have to talk about the quality. The quality of your iman, how close you are to Allah. Why are you driving? You can be close to Allah. When you're at home, you can be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even without any prayer, without, but you have, subhanAllah, you are mindful of his greatness. You are mindful of his help. You are mindful of his, of his subhanAllah, that he's taking care of you. That he, with his watchfulness, you are mindful. That's what we need. That's the quality. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will direct your heart toward loving more the salah. Loving more dedicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way. Loving more to seek more and find and dig into the khushu' into your salah. That's how your heart is directed. This is a sign for us. This is a sign for us. If you know that you are on the good path, look at your heart where it's shifted, where it's inclined to. That inclination, if it's not completely or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you know that you are not doing enough. And if it is, then know also that is a sign that Allah loves you. Allah, if he loves you, he's not going to give you a billion of dollars. No. He's not going to give you what you ask now. No. He's going to direct your heart toward his love and toward his submission. That is the true sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in brief, how can we do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a principle, there's a quality that he granted to Ibrahim and his offspring. What is this quality? Qal, and we gave them the exclusive quality of remembering the hereafter. Inna Why? Because when you live already in the akhirah, when your heart is the akhirah, then the quality of your worship is going to increase. Therefore, the quality of the worship of Ibrahim salam, it was due to his remembrance of the hereafter. And the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the heart of the magician of Fir'aun, it was the remembrance of the, of the hereafter. Because they already live in the hereafter. Look what they said. He was threatening them with death. What he said? قَالَ, قَالُوا إِنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا لَا ضَيْرٍ No harm. Can you imagine someone being threatened to die? To be killed? To be crucified and say no harm? لَا ضَيْرٍ إِنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا مُخَابِهُونَ You're going to go back to Allah. And then, إِنَّمَا تَقْضِي هَذِي الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا You only have to manage or control what you're doing here in this life. That's it. This is the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in their heart. And then they said, subhanAllah, قَالُوا وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ Allah is greater. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far, you know, better and everlasting. Not like you. You're going to die, ya Fir'aun. And he died, as all of you know. And he died like punished. And then they said, Inna not we are craving, we are longing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins in the day of judgment. And then they said, what was this dua? Oh Allah, pour on us patience and cause us to die as Muslim. This is the power. This is the power in the heart. We're not talking about power to have muscle or to have skilled into weapon. The power in the heart that Allah granted to these magician after the mabda what was the principle the truth for submission what was the truth for submission is the truthful deep sujood that they made in front of the tyrant Fir'aun for may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be able to have a truthful submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with which he will guide you with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be watchful of you with which he will defend you and he will watch will be with you and increase you in blessing and make you a blessed and make you a light walking among people. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yarzukhana al-istislam al-sadiq al-tam wa yarzukhana nasrah wa yaj'anna min ansarih. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana ajma'ina ya rabbal alameen wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim. Allahumma taqabbal siyamana wa taqabbal qiyamana wa taqabbal salatana wa taqabbal dua'ana. Allahumma aj'anna min utaqa'ika min al-niran اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا رب العالمين ويا رب المستضعفين أغث إخواننا في غزة اللهم أغثهم يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظهم اللهم أنزل عليهم رحماتك اللهم سد جوعتهم اللهم آمن روعاتهم اللهم استر عوراتهم اللهم ثبتهم يا رب العالمين أفرغ عليهم صبرا 
وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على المعتدين اللهم انصر مجاهديهم اللهم أيدهم بنصرك يا نعم المولى ويا نعم النصير وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله